On February 28th, 2010, Canada and the US faced off in the gold medal game for men's ice hockey. As a Canadian, this was a pretty big deal for me. It was a chance for our team to avenge their round robin loss and claim a record setting 14th gold medal for the country. There was a lot at stake for this showdown and it lived up to all the hype. Now, I remember lots of things about this game and I promise this is a rock climbing video, so just stay with me. I remember the highs, I remember the lows, and of course, I remember seven minutes and 40 seconds into the extra period when Sidney Crosby received a pass from a falling Jerome McGinley and put it five hole to win the game for the Canadians. More than that, though, I remember the feeling I got when these two teams were lining up for the opening face-off. There was this sense that no matter what happened, no matter which team won, I was about to witness one of the greatest exhibitions of hockey ever seen. There was just too much raw talent on the ice for this game to be anything short of spectacular. You get these moments sometimes in sports, like Game 7 of the 2016 NBA Finals or the 49th Super Bowl, where you just know that no matter what the outcome, you're about to see the sport displayed at the absolute highest level. This is the feeling, and it's gonna sound like I'm exaggerating here, but I promise you I'm not. This is the feeling I get every time I watch Kim Jae-in climb. Considered one of, if not the greatest competition climbers of all time, Kim Jae-in has essentially become synonymous with good technique. She's flawless, there's no other word to describe her climbing. Every move is deliberate, every single motion is thought out, and every time she steps up to the wall, I just know I'm going to be treated to an absolutely masterful display of rock climbing skill. We've seen climbers before with good technique, from Lynn Hill to Adam Andra, but we've never seen anyone as good as Kim Jae-in, and I don't know if we ever will. She shows a mastery of the sport that, to me, is completely unparalleled, and it's all I could think about when I was watching clips of her climb. This is my breakdown of one of the sport's all-time greats. This is the perfection of Kim Jae-in. Hey guys, welcome back to Climbing Styles, where we break down some of the world's best climbers to find out what it is that makes them special. Today we're going to be looking at Kim Jae-in, whose route reading skills and flawless execution have helped her claim 29 World Cup League gold medals. Now, it's pretty obvious to most people that her climbing style would be good technique. With that said though, there are a lot of climbers who base their styles around good technique, and none of them have been able to achieve the near mythical status that Kim Jae-in has. So for this video, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into the specifics of what she does that allows her to be so good. First is her pace. Anyone who's ever watched her compete knows that Kim Jae-in climbs incredibly slowly and this acts as a foundation for everything else that she does. More specifically, it allows her to do two main things, conserve energy and get the right beta reads. I'll talk about the reads later, so for now we'll focus on the energy conservation. If you watched the video I made recently about Jonathan Segrist, you know that there are basically two ways to avoid getting pumped out while climbing. You can either move quickly or you can move efficiently. If you move quickly, you spend less time on route, which means less time on each hold, and your forearms get less pumped. The downside though is that each move is going to be slightly less efficient and therefore take up more of your energy. The other option is to move more slowly, taking your time with each placement, and making sure you do everything as efficiently as possible. Each individual move will tax your body less, but you spend longer on the holds, which tires you out more. There's no right or wrong style. What you're going to want to do depends on whether you have more anaerobic or aerobic capacity. If you're an explosive power-based climber, it makes sense to move quickly and rely on your strength. If you don't have that same explosiveness though, slowing things down will allow you to get just the right hand and footholds and make each move less tiring. This is what Kim Jae-in does, and in my opinion, she does it better than anyone else. Watching her move, you can see just how careful she is throughout all of the sequences and how her patience allows her to almost always take the path of least resistance. By not rushing through anything, she uses up as little energy as necessary, giving her more power for the cruxes. The second thing that the endurance and slow pace does for her is to allow her to experiment. She likes to take her time on route, testing out different moves to see if they're the easiest way through a sequence. 
It's not uncommon for her to select her holds, move up for half a second, and then ditch the entire thing when it's not as efficient as she thought it would be. Doing this helps her find the easiest sequences, and when it does work out, it allows for some really great reads. Both of these things require crazy amounts of endurance. Spending 6 minutes on any route is exhausting, let alone a 514 comp route, and I think that's the reason that not many other climbers do this as well as Kim Jain does. In addition to moving slowly and making the right reads, her body positioning is almost always flawless. She's great at using her core to keep her feet close to the wall, even when she has to cut loose. This helps her conserve energy and reduces the risk of swings and big falls. A good example of this was the Inzai 2019 lead finals. You can see how, even through these big jerky moves, she stays tight to the wall and minimizes any swing from her legs. There's also her hips. She's incredibly flexible and even when she takes these crazy high feet, you can see how quickly she moves her hips back into place, pulling them close so they're right above her legs as she goes up. This habit of sticking close to the wall helps reduce strain on her fingertips and keeps her weight well distributed. It minimizes her fatigue, which again makes her climbing more efficient. Now, moving slowly and keeping your body close to the wall are pretty common techniques. Kim Jae-in might be better at them than most climbers, but there's nothing revolutionary about it. Watching her climb though, there is one thing that I saw her do that's pretty rare amongst rock climbers, and that is her use of the triangle position. For those of you unfamiliar with it, the triangle position is an ice climbing technique used to equally distribute your weight and minimize the risk of a fall. If you watch an ice climber on route, you'll notice that their motions are almost robotic. They take two small steps up, stand straight, move their tools up, and repeat the process. When you pay attention to their body, you'll see that they always maintain what's known as the triangle. Their feet are at even height and wider than their hips, and their arms are high and roughly shoulder width apart. They use this position because ice climbing falls are really risky and the triangle is one of the most stable poses you can get. With your feet wide and your hands above you, the weight is distributed directly downwards in a straight line. This pulls straight on your tools and gives them the best possible grip on the ice. Obviously, rock climbers can't stay in triangle when they climb because the position of the holds requires them to distribute their weight in all kinds of creative ways. Watching her climb though, you can see that Kim Jae-in likes to find herself in triangle position or at least something close to it as often as possible. This helps her save energy, especially on big reachy moves. One of the main ways she does this is by smearing. Whenever she only has one good foothold, she'll often flag the other foot out and rest it on the wall. It doesn't provide any purchase, but it helps to center her weight so that the handhold is directly above her. This again makes sure that her center of gravity is pointed directly downwards and makes it easier to hang onto the hold. By contrast, most other climbers will keep their weight pulled off to one side in this type of position. Here's an example of her doing this in the Wu Zhang 2017 lead final. Before moving up with her right hand, she brings her left foot out to the side and just smears it there. This builds the triangle, centering the weight preemptively and making the move easier. Barely 4 moves later, she does it again. You can see that some climbers struggled with the beta on this traverse. Here's Ashima Shirashi using a heel hook that, while definitely effective, looked pretty difficult for the 15th hold on a route. By contrast, watch Kim Jae-in try it. After getting the right hand, she squares her body up and smears the foot. You can see that this once again brings her into classic triangle position. Her feet are wide and her hands are directly overhead, giving her the stability she needs to comfortably bring the left hand down. She doesn't only do this when smearing either. This clip is from the 2018 Wu Zhang final. You can see that she builds a triangle as she moves up to the side pole. Once she secures it, she moves her right foot farther up and builds a triangle again, this time opting to go for a toe hook with her left foot. This is a small movement, but it keeps her feet directly below her hips with her weight pulling downwards. My favorite example of this triangle working for Kim Jae-in was in the 2015 PERS lead final. The crux of this route was this move, where athletes bumped up onto the volume with their right hand. 
You can see that Jesse Pilts and Annick Verhoeven both do the same thing. They put their right foot far out and drop their left foot low, trying to pull themselves up and latch the hold. It's a really difficult move because once they let go with the right hand, they basically have nothing holding them onto the wall and they need to catch their full weight on this tiny hold. Neither climber is able to do it. Now watch Kim Jae-in try. She does the same thing with her right foot, but then she brings the left up and smears it against the volume, building a triangle and solidifying her position. Suddenly, her entire weight isn't reliant on the right hand and the move looks incredibly static and easy for her compared to other climbers. She tops the route and wins the competition. It's not something that can be used in every position, but building a triangle, even when there isn't a foothold to help you do so, can be a great way to redistribute your weight while climbing. It's a small thing, sure, but I think Kim Jae-in's climbing style is basically defined by that. Tens of small, almost unnoticeable adjustments that, when put together, result in her being one of the generation's greatest rock climbers. She is the grandmaster of rock climbing, and given her recent showing in 2019, I think we can all count ourselves incredibly lucky that she's looking to stay that way for a long time. If you're a young climber or just someone looking to work on their technique a little bit, there's no one better to study than Kim Jae-in. This entire video could have just been me ranting about how good her form is and breaking down all the tiny adjustments she makes mid-route to get the moves down as easy as possible and increase her chance of getting a top. She is truly one of my favorite climbers to watch and like I said in the intro, every time she steps up to the wall, I feel like I'm going to be treated to something special and that is the perfection of Kim Jae-in. Alright guys, that's everything for today. Thank you for watching and as always, let me know in the comments if there's any other climbers who you want me to do a breakdown on. Subscribe and such if you liked the video and I will see you next time.